All right, everyone. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to build and play Vulcan in season 10 of Smite. And basically just going to go through the build that I use mainly for mid. I use them in Conquest, but that mid build you can use in any game mode like Joust or Arena as well. Uh, and I'll talk you through why I'm buying each item. And I don't want to like do too much of an intro, so I'll get straight into it. Uh, the main two items that you'll get for starter on Vulcan is either Sands of Time or Conduit Gem. I'm going to be straight up, I get a Conduit Gem. Why? Because I know this gives cooldown and it upgrades into 20% cooldown as well. However, in Conquest, you might benefit from the 10% early game, but after that, you kind of hold off on building a lot of cooldown items. Because if you think about it, if you know that's going to give you 20% late game, you're going to hold off on buying, for example uh chronos pendant it's got 20 percent, but then that's going to give you the final 20 percent, and then you can't build anything else you might want to build spirit of desolation uh you might want to build anything else that's cool down but you kind of won't because you know that you gain 20 percent, and you don't want to go over the cap uh even soul gem with myself so um i know that i'm gonna build other items with cooldown in it just because they're good items so i don't want to over cap by going 20 percent that last game and no one really gets alternate timeline so that's what i'm gonna get that uh, then first item I always start off with Chronos Pendant. Huh, I guess we're going there already. Uh, where is it? I'm blind. But you guys are like it's right there. I literally am blind. Well, you know what? We're just gonna get from there. Oh, I am blind. Um, so Chronos Pendant first. Why? So firstly, you get first here. It gives you five MP, five twenty power, uh, and early game cooldown is kind of what you want so you can kind of be poking in your lane and spamming your abilities i guess as much as you can as much as you can uh and the mp5 definitely does help so i don't really go any stacking and book of thoth will give you that mana but i prefer to go the mp5 route because stacking and early game and whatever i just feel like the cooldown is a lot more helpful early game uh combined with the conduit gem and it's passive you, you'll be doing quite quite a bit of damage uh, and it always does work for me but if something else works for you then let me know in the comments below um so that's 20 percent cooldown now the next item is completely up to you what kind of I'll basically just talk through it. So you either have Spirit of Desolation or you have Soul Gem. Now both give 10% cooldown, which is why I go them second item. Uh, it's up to you whether you want the, a bit of lifesteal, a bit of health, a bit less power, but then the passive, which kind of heals you and does extra damage to uh, an enemy. Or you've got Spirit of Desolation, gives you a bit more power, a bit of penetration and the same cooldown. But uh, the passive obviously reduces your cooldowns of your ultimate and your normal abilities. Now it's up to you what you want to go. Uh, if you want to go for a bit more survivability, go with Soul Gem. It gives you that bit of life steal. It's kind of annoying when you're in lane. You don't need a health pot. Like, you, you can get a health pot, but I feel like with Spirit of Desolation, you just don't have that survivability in the lane. Uh, but with this little bit, you know, you hit the enemy, whatever. Uh, you hit the minions. You got that little bit of life steal, so you can life steal. Now, Spirit of Desolation, really, really good for team fights. Uh, you'll get your abilities up a lot. Uh, it'll give you that 30% cooldown and then the last 10% will come from the potion, uh, just like with Soul Gem, but that will give you that extra cooldown. So you've got Corona's Pendant ticking, which reduces one second of your cooldown every 10 seconds, but then on top of that, you get any assist. This has no cooldown. So if you keep on getting kills or assists, uh, it's really good. So you can do Spirit Desolation as well. Now, personally, I like to go Soul Gem, but I will say either of them is fine. Uh, I just feel like these two items early game, you've already got 30% cooldown, you'll be pumping out the numbers. Next, again, it's like a... If you... Uh, it's all situation dependent, which is what I'm going to say. So, there'll be a point in the game now where you've done... You've gotten this build and you're either like, okay, the game's going fine, no issues so far, I've got some decent kills, I'll go Spear of Magus. There we go. Situation number two, they're healing a lot, it's really annoying, I'm going to get Divine. Thirdly, they're getting away with very little health and I'm starting to get really annoyed. Rod of Tuhi. Safe bet for me is Rod of Tuhi. Now, they might have un like healing and whatever, but I mean, if they have healing, then go Divine, definitely. If they don't have healing and you have a choice between Spirit Magus and Rod, there might be a situation where you're like, you know, I'm kind of getting the kills. I'll just go with Spirit Magus. I prefer to go with Rod. Uh, just because the it's passive basically if they're below well if they're below 60% healthy you do 20% additional damage so I just really enjoy that 
Um, I'm not going to choose the upgrade of that yet. Then it will be either Spear Magus or Divine. Now, if you think the healing is a bit, but they're not healing too much, or even it could be the healing's not even in your lane, uh, that's a really important one. So, Aphrodite could be a support um, or a solo lane, and they're not in your lane much. They're just rotating, so that's not a direct problem to you, but it will be late game. So, you can get either Divine or Spear Magus. Uh, I'm going to go with Spear Magus because, I mean, not every game has a healer, but every game Spear Magus will be really good. Just a really good passive. Um, when you hit someone, they just take 5% increased damage. It gives 110 power, some life steal as well to go along with the soul gem, and 8% uh, penetration. So now you have 16%. The cap is 32. You already have 16. Uh, I don't like to go max penetration just because it just feels kind of excessive. Uh, but that's just me. Now, last item again is game dependent. I'll, I'll be there. I'm going to be like, all right, are they really tanky? Can I not damage them? Uh, if the answer is yes, then I'll be like, right, I want to go some penetration. I'll go like a staff of Um When you do your all, 20% uh, increased damage to King over 8 seconds. Uh, but you can just give 105 power, 10% cooldown to make your cooldown max. So the potion does over cap. So it's kind of you're in that situation you're thinking. Personally, why I like to go most of the time is Doom Orb. Doom Orb is something you can go early game. But I like to go it a bit of late game because, I mean, the reason it's so good on Vulcan is because he does get 50% movement speed when he hits a god. Combine that with the Doom Orb, 6% movement speed. Combine that with the 5 stacks of 1% movement speed, another 5%. So he's going to be pretty quick and catching up to enemies. And that's the last item. Uh, and again, with this one, it's kind of what you feel. I, I wouldn't say any of these are really good like i mean not really good really better than the other i've had really good games with this one i've had really good games with, with this one personally i had to go this one because again the movement speed uh combined with vulcan's passive uh, combined with doom of does really well but this is definitely not a bad item and i would say go for that as well and then obviously we don't have bancroft so the only glyph we can get is one of these two personally i like to get this one uh, movement speed and again reduce your abilities now this actually goes really well with spear of desolation as well but uh this one i mean it occurs once every 30 seconds it just feels like it's a bit useless after a certain point so that is basically the build uh star items again game dependent they got aries or something over a beads uh, they don't have any beads requiring go and agus and then a, a blink uh, agus and a sprint shell uh, that's completely up to you but that is the basic build now in terms of combos the only main one i mean oh God, i'll buy them just so that doesn't stay on the screen just so i can get around faster all right so the biggest combo of all obviously is when they're running you hit okay well that's if i can hit them and you know what i'm gonna go reduce my cooldowns just so if I'm trying to show you guys something. Uh, I can. Not that one. Alright. So they're going. Uh, is it 3 and 1? Now, I'd say take your time with the 3. Wow, this guy's fast. Take your time with the 3. Uh, wherever. Oh my god. Wherever they're landing, uh, kind of just throw your ability there. It's because a lot of people, they just do like. Well, not that. I mean, I'm doing awful. This guy's. They'll do, I don't know, something like that where they just miss their one. So predict where they're going and then hit your one like that. They, they While they're in the air, they're not going to go anywhere. Second one is put your two down and one them because you'll just get that insane burst damage. Uh, okay. I just want to demonstrate that on a god. Now, bear in mind, if someone has a mark, uh, Inferno kind of takes 50% additional from. Okay, well. Uh, ignores 25 targets from my protection and there's something it says it targets well it targets whoever's got the mark on from god okay so if I do you saw that so that's an instant it'll take a shot and I mean 317 per auto so you put it down and then you auto them because the cannon will hit them but it also targets them if they've got the one mark on them your passive basically although i can't see that in there maybe i'm like that deal damage to target every second they last until that but does not apply in front of cannon or does it say targets every second well 
It does. You know, we can actually test it out. So... If I have it there, it's attacking him. Yeah, so it targets whoever's got that thing on them. Uh, so 2 1. And then the last main combo is. Well, I'll do it on Raw actually. Is your ult 3 1. Now I'm going to kill him first. You can die. So you do that. But what you can also technically do is ult next to them. But the main one I do is the ult 3 1. Uh, that'll get your most burst damage. Um. I'm trying to position it here where well uh, what you can do though is all and then hit the three and then hit them into it uh, and that's basically it for the build and the playing there's not much to it uh, actually yeah we'll talk about maxing out abilities um, just based on this it's a tough one because the three is your main poke and the one is also good but when it comes to maxing out I probably max out the one why? Because the one has the low cooldown. Let me just go back on and reduce cooldowns. So with the cooldown I currently have, which is 30%, just to double check. Hmm. Where is it? 30%. Wow, it says 80%. So with the pot, uh, right now it's 4.2 seconds, take the pot. 3.6 seconds to 6 seconds max cooldown. So... You can, you can spam your 1 a lot more in team fights or whatever in 3 me, but whenever. So max out the 1, then the 3, then the 2, then the 1. But I guess throughout the game you can kind of switch between your 2 and 1, but max out the uh, your 3 and your 2 because you're going to max out your 1. Uh, these two will do decent damage and the amount of times your turret can get the final hit is pretty good. Also, I never noticed it says pet. And that is basically all of it. If I missed something, just leave in the comments below. I've gone through the conquest build. Conquest build is the same as the mage build. Uh, you don't really use it for anything else. Um, how to use his combos. There's not much to it. The only main one that I like is the turret and one. And all three one. Uh, does a lot of burst damage. And lastly is the leveling of abilities. But yeah, thank you for watching. And if there's any other gods you want to see, leave in the comments below. And I'll try and do them next. Uh, but I'll see you guys in the next video.